Joining me now for more on who's behind the business of fear mongering, author of Republican Gamora Inside the Movement That Shattered the Party, Max Blumenthal. Uh, so, Max, even though we've kind of heard, uh, heard about Islamophobia recently, it seems like, especially, especially when you think of the Cordoba House in New York, uh, you claim that this is a movement that's kind of been gaining ground for years. Uh, when did it exactly start, and what was it in response to? Yeah, it's funny because polls um, from, you know, the Pew polling organization, which is a reputable polling organization, show American opinion of Muslims at an all-time low, and we're almost 10 years after 9-11. So where is this coming from? It's actually a sustained campaign that began well before 9-11 and has reached its peak um, with the um, plan to establish an Islamic community center at Cordoba House. And what I pointed out in my article, The Great Islamic Crusade, at tomdispatch.com and at my blog, maxblumenthal.com, is that there is a network, an organized network, that stretches across continents that has incited this campaign against Muslim citizens of America and which is profiting off of it and has its own network of funders. And so tell me a little bit more about who's behind this kind of fear-mongering, I guess you could say, and what exactly is their agenda? How did they manage to take uh, what they believed and turn it into what's almost considered mass hysteria in the United States by some? Yeah, I mean, you see this in Europe a lot um, with figures like Gert Wilders, the uh, Dutch politician, um, who's basically a proto-fascist who calls um, Islam a retarded religion and has proposed what he calls a head rag tax on Muslim women, which is completely undemocratic. And that's spreading to the United States through the funding of people like Aubrey Chernick, a little-known sugar daddy of the Islamophobic movement, who used to be a trustee at a think tank run out of the pro-Israel lobby, AIPAC, but who funds everything from CAMERA, a pro-Israel media monitoring group, to the American Jewish Committee, to the Anti-Defamation League, which opposed the community center at Ground Zero, to uh, various figures like Robert Spencer, who is the key voice of pseudo-scholarly Islamophobia in the United States, who has gotten almost a million dollars from this Aubrey Chernick character, who simultaneously runs a security consulting firm. So you could see why he would want to gin up this fear about American Muslims, because that um, le he can leverage that into profits for his security consulting firm, which is designed to consult for law enforcement agencies on terrorism or the imagined threat of it. And how did the media pick up on all this hype? We saw in Marina's story, it seems like a perfect storyline uh, for all these mainstream media channels. You know, there's an easy villain, you can use all your dramatic graphics and dramatic music. Are there ties between these pro, the pro-Israeli lobby uh, and the media? Well, I mean, this did start out of the pro-Israeli lobbies, I pointed out in my piece. And it wasn't necessarily about Muslims. It was about the fear of pro-Palestinian organizing on campus. So the major pro-Israel groups started a group called the David Project to do media on this topic. Then simultaneously, the David Project moved into Boston in 2004, where plans were in the works to build an Islamic community center very similar to the one being built at Ground Zero that caused all these rallies and all this hatred. Um, and they began um, sort of creating a blueprint for their broader strategy against this community center in Boston. And they, they, they went to friendly media um, outlets like the Boston Herald, a right-wing paper, Fox News, and they had their own group of experts people like Stephen Emerson, who was run out of the jur their journalism, mainstream journalism, because of his uh, tendency to cook facts about the uh, terrorist intentions of Muslims, and became sort of an expert uh, funded by this network of Islamophobic sugar daddies and promoted by groups like the David Project to, do, uh, to incite against community centers, to incite against Muslim activists. And, and it built over the course of five years from that little campaign in Boston through several local campaigns um, with this organized network of media experts who are not um, established academics, who have no credentials in journalism or academia, um, to gin up this um, imaginary fear of Muslim Americans forming terror cells in cities and um, being determined to um, implant 
Sharia law in our justice system, which is ridiculous. And, you know, beyond the media, it seems like even politicians have kind of jumped on this Islamophobic bandwagon. We had people like Sarah Palin, who was tweeting about the Cordoba house. Newt Gingrich also said, uh, you know, a couple controversial quotes about it. We even have a United States Attorney General, Eric Holder, talking about it. I believe we have a sound bite. Uh, if we could take a listen to that. The threat has changed from simply worrying about foreigners coming here to worrying about people in the United States, American citizens, um, raised here, born here. You didn't worry about this even two years ago. So how did these people get all of these politicians or even the government to start taking notice of their campaign? And what do you think? Yeah, mainly Republican politicians have figured out that this is a pretty, uh, pretty good wedge issue. It's a good hot button issue. I mean, you can't talk about, um, you can't be anti-Semitic towards Jews in the United States. You can't be racist towards black people, at least openly. Um, so they need someone to demonize, someone to scapegoat um, for their constituency, which lives primarily in, um, you know, racially monolithic areas like Oklahoma, which just passed a resolution this election season banning Sharia law, as if anyone's going to implement Sharia law in Oklahoma. So Sarah Palin has called the Ground Zero Com Islamic Community Center a stab in the heart, borrowing language that um, Hitler used after World War I about Jews um, in Germany stabbing Germany in the back. I don't think she meant to borrow it, but it really reminds me of that. Newt Gingrich, uh, who is a presidential frontrunner for the Republicans this year, appeared at the rally against the Ground Zero Community Center beside Gert Wilders, the Dutch fascist politician, um, and several um, shady characters like right. Pamela Geller, who calls uh, Muslims Nazis. I mean, mm -hmm. so, so you see them um, moving in the same circles as far-right extremists, and it's, it's working at least for their base. Um, and scapegoating a group of Americans. Yeah, really quickly, how come Americans are buying into this? There's so much going on in this country right now. We have people living off food stamps. There's so, such high unemployment. Um, Muslims as the scapegoat, I mean, that seems logical. Why, why are so many Americans buying into it? It's a great way to distract from the fact uh, that the Republicans' economic policies have helped get it, um, average Americans into the mess that they're in and that um, their economic policies are the reason why people are being evicted from their homes and their mortgage and uh, they can't pay off their mortgages. Um, and we saw this strategy uh, in the 1950s in the Deep South uh, to prevent poor whites and poor African Americans from getting together and forming a coalition against the southern oligarchs right. by scaring poor whites about poor blacks being, com Martin Luther King being a communist and so on. So this is right. just a continuation of the scare tactics we've been seeing for a long time. But it's time to show that it's part of an organized network yeah. and not actually a reflection of reality. It's really interesting to take a look back at sort of uh, how this campaign started. Uh, Max Blumenthal, thanks so much for your analysis. Thanks for having me.